Cost accounting 17C, cost allocation involving job sheets, work in process, and material accounts. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email address, and also the website, stltest.net. I wanted to start, and this may take more than one video, a very complex problem that a student of mine had that hits upon a lot of areas in cost accounting. And so what I'd like to do first is just to talk about this spreadsheet generally. And I think what I'll do is expand it a bit so I get as much on the screen as I can. Uh, this is about assigning overhead costs. And you'll notice at the bottom that I have the overhead rates that I came up with and labor costs on one template. This is a very complex problem. I have the flow of manufacturing costs on another template, and essentially what's important here are the debits that go into work in process for jobs that are in process. I have job cost sheets for several different jobs here, and then I have what's going on with the material balances, the balances of several different kinds of material here. So let's start off with the material. We have three different kinds of material, A, B, and C, and we're told in the question that we're going to use FIFO inventory method. So let's use material A as an example. We're told in the question at the top that we have a beginning balance, which happens to be September 30th, of 120 units at $25, and if I multiply that together, it's a beginning balance of $3,000. So I put a beginning balance here. <clears throat> During the month, I make purchases. There are my purchases. It happens to be $1,100 times 26. There are my purchases, 28600 of material A during October, the month in question. Then you can see we have negatives coming out because we're transferring costs into WIP, or work in process. And we're, keep in mind also that we're using the FIFO method of inventory. And here are the jobs that we're assigning those costs to and the units per job. And here's where it gets tricky. We're going to assign 600 units of material A to job 1001. FIFO says that we transfer out the oldest units first. So we transfer out 120 at $25 first. Job 1001 asked for 600 units, so we're going to transfer out the other 480 at 26. So 120 plus 480 equals my 600 units for job 1001. Job 1002 was then had 400 units go into production, so again, negative 400 at $26 a unit. Those are the units that go out for job 1002. There's two ways to check your math. The first is, how many units do I have left at what cost? And that comes up to 5720. To make sure that that number is correct, you can add the total dollar amounts in the door, which was the beginning balance and the purchases in blue, less the dollar amounts that went out the door, which are the negatives, and you get the same 5720 indicating that you handled the units and the costs correctly. So that's what you see going on in the tab that says material balances. The other thing that happens is I have to post the material we're putting into production in the job cost detail. So for example, here is job 1001. Here's material A. And it's linked to this page. So the 3,000 in material that went out the door and we took off the material account detail went in the door right here into this job 1,001. The 12,480 that we took out of material A goes into the job sheet detail 12,480. So those are material costs for material A that are going into that job 1001. 
there's one more step, which is in this T account for work in process, there's the 3000 and the 12480 debiting work in process, indicating that those costs for material A are going into work in process. So we would debit work in process and we would credit those material balances that you see over here. You'll see the same process for labor. We're given three jobs and we're given hours worked for those jobs, the labor rate that we pay, and the total cost. So let's take job 1001 again. And we see that for job 1001, we had stamping and plating as the production departments. We worked 1,200 hours at $9 for stamping costs, labor for stamping. For job 1001, we had $300 at 11. That was the cost for plating two production areas. So my total cost for job 1001 is stamping costs in blue plus plating costs in green for $14,100. Those costs go two places. First of all, if I go to job 1001, here are the labor costs, 14100 in October for job 1001. That amount is linked to this total right here. And then the flow of manufacturing costs, here is my labor cost for October. It's a debit to work in process for job 1001, and that also agrees to the labor cost per job, $14,100 over here. So we've put in material and labor costs. The last thing we do to do, need to do as far as assigning costs is overhead. And we're told in the problem the budgeted costs and the budgeted activity that we're supposed to use for overhead. We're told that, again, two production areas, stamping and plating. We, have, we expect this much cost in our budget. We expect this many labor hours, which indicates we're allocating based on direct labor hours. So I divide cost by labor hours, blue by green, and I get a cost per labor hour for stamping and a cost per labor hour for plating. I then take, I then apply my overhead using the labor rates that you saw down here. Here are the labor rates. I'm now going to apply overhead using those rates. So there's the five and the 19 about $19.17. Again, stamping and plating are our production areas. Here are the hours we're working. So for stamping, we're going to multiply those labor hours by five to get each amount of labor of overhead that's assigned. And then for plating, we're going to take the hours worked and we're going to multiply it by the $19 and roughly 17 cents to get that overhead assigned, and this overhead ends up in two places. It gets assigned to the job cost sheet, overhead applied. It also gets assigned to work in process. There's the T account debit, overhead applied. The last thing is maybe the most difficult, and that is, is that we have two production departments and we have two service departments which are really support departments and we call them that because they support the activities of the production departments and the rationale is they happen to be power and maintenance. The rationale in blue says that we allocate all service costs to a production department and the reason we do that is if we assign all the costs to a production department they can be assigned to the product which is the whole point of allocating costs. Now this is a two-step process because maintenance costs get allocated to stamping, plating, and power. So we have one support area maintenance getting assigned to both production and power. And we do it based on square footage of a factory. So here are the three departments we're assigning to for maintenance. The square footage, the per percentages of the total, and I didn't have it in the question, but 
we would assign maintenance costs to the two production areas, stamping plating, and another support or service area, power. Then we would take the power cost, including what we assign from maintenance, and we would allocate it evenly in this question between stamping and plating 50 cent percent each. And the end result is that both service departments, power and maintenance, are fully allocated to the production department staffing and plating. That's as far as we're going to get on this video. Remember on our website we teach the toughest accounting topics on a live chat. These five areas that students have the most trouble with on an ongoing basis and you can check the website and email me for that. And finally the book Cost Accounting for Dummies is now on Amazon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.